Hello, everybody. Hello from Israel. My name is Ronnie Simon. Last week, Israel had commemorated the 53rd anniversary for the amazing military victory that we had over the Arab armies in 1967. It's known by the name the Six Day War, and no doubt that was an amazing victory, and it really set everybody in the country in a certain mode of pride, of arrogance in a way. Historians will say that maybe we were punished for that wave of pride and arrogance six years later in the War of Yom Kippur. Many people wrote books about the Six Day War. Historians are still debating about the reasons for the war, what was the course of events. But very seldom people will bring up the issue of the Palestinians in the aftermath of the Six Day War. Let me try to address that in a few minutes because everybody has an opinion, everybody has an agenda, and most of these opinions are not based on facts. They're based on sentiments, they're based on rumors, but well, the facts are important to know. And then, once you understand the facts, do with them whatever you want, but the facts cannot be ignored. What if I told you that the term Palestinian was not even used before 1967? If you had a chance to chat with people who lived in the Middle East about a century ago and ask them questions about their identity and about their nationality, the term nationality was not born yet in the Middle East. If you check with somebody in Baghdad and ask him a question, Sir, ma'am, how do you define yourselves? The answer will be most likely, I am an Arab, indicating his civilization. I am a Muslim, indicating his religion. And then he will say that he is a resident of the Ottoman Empire. Maybe he could add, he is also resident of a province called Mesopotamia. If you check with an Arab who lived in Palestine back then, and ask him the same question, the answer will be, I am an Arab indeed, indicating his civilization. I am a Muslim, he could have said Christian as well, because it's not a religion to be an Arab. But he would never say that he is a Palestinian by nationality, because the concept of nations was not born yet in the Middle East. I cannot go in such a short broadcast over the whole history, but I can recommend that you should go and check out my website, and there is, free of charge, a whole list of lectures that you can view there, and one speaks about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. I'm sure that most of you thought that this conflict goes back centuries in time. You're wrong. So therefore, the local Arabs that lived in Palestine did not have a specific identity. Not until 1947, 1948, when you read the documents written by the locals, they called Palestine southern Syria. And therefore to think that there was always a nation called Palestinians, that the country was conquered by the Jewish people that brutally treated them, this is an historical error. This is not the case. And since I cannot go into an hour and a half of a lecture, let me just say the following. The way that the War of Independence ended in 1949 was that most of the Arabs who lived in Palestine, but did not see themselves as Palestinians, ended up as refugees, many of them invited by the neighboring Arab countries. The leadership of Lebanon, and Syria, and Jordan, and Iraq, and Egypt invited the local Arabs to the countries just for the time being. This invitation is well documented, well recorded, the logic behind it was, we are going to attack the Jewish state once it is born. If you're going to stay there, you may be caught in the line of fire, and therefore clear the area only for a short while. And after we are going to throw the Jews into the ocean, then you can go back and take their possessions. And therefore, people that will be called in the future Palestinian refugees left the country willingly, and not because the outcomes of the war. Not everybody, but most of them. Those that went to Lebanon today, 70-something years later, are treated shamefully by the Lebanese. They are not citizens of Lebanon. They are limited to residences in refugee camps. They cannot have a decent occupation. They cannot leave the country. So when people speak about racism in the Middle East, it's not Israel being racist over the Palestinians. It's our own brothers and sisters. Those who fled to Syria suffered the same outcomes. 
treated like dogs by the civil regime. Only seven, eight years ago, during the civil war in Syria, some of these Palestinians were suspected by the Syrians that they are collaborating with ISIS and with the Syrian opposition. There was a refugee camp in Damascus called Yarmouk, inhabited by Palestinians, third generation now, that they almost starved them to death as a retaliation. That's how the Arabs treat the Palestinians. Those who fled to Egypt were treated very shamefully by the Egyptians and by the Iraqis. There was only one exception, and that was the people that fled to Jordan. They went to the West Bank that was supposed to be the homeland for the Palestinian state, as proposed by the United Nations. The West Bank was occupied by Jordan after the war was over, an occupation and annexation by the Jordanian regime that nobody in the world accepted except for Britain and Pakistan. So these Palestinians that were invited by the King of Jordan to Jordan, he was the only one that gave them citizenship, but not as Palestinians that live in Jordan, but as Jordanians. And therefore, the annexation of the West Bank to Jordan gave those people an opportunity to be citizens of a country and residents of a nation, so they do enjoy the same rights almost as most other Jordanians. And by the way, they make 70% of the population of Jordan of today are people that were occupied by the Jordanians because the West Bank was supposed to be the Palestinian homeland. 1967 was an amazing victory that was followed by much confusion, especially on the Israeli side. But if you take it for another angle for just a minute, and they will not say that, but I will, the best thing that ever happened to the Palestinians was Israel's victory in the war of 1967. Living in Jordan, if you dare to speak about your national aspirations, you end up with a bullet in your head. Yes, you came from a place called Palestine, but now you are Jordanian. You're supposed to be fully integrated into the Jordanian society and not to aspire to separate and to have your own national identity. If you dare to say that in Syria or Lebanon or Iraq or Egypt, you end up with a bullet in your head. And suddenly, the West Bank, Judea and Samaria are now occupied slash liberated by the State of Israel, a democracy, lo and behold. The democracy. You can speak about your rights. You can speak about your aspirations. You can speak about whatever you want. The best thing that happened to the Palestinians was Israel's victory in the war of 1967. We made them a nation. We gave them a chance once again to aspire to be a nation, something that was totally crushed by the other Arab countries. And by the way, people that speak about how oppressive is Israel vis-a-vis -vis the Palestinians in the West Bank, let me submit to you, and you go to, go to the United Nations records, don't trust what I'm telling you. But it's well documented, the highest standard of living for the Arabs around the Arab countries is the Palestinians in the West Bank. The rate of unemployment, the lowest. Infant mortality, the lowest. When the West Bank was under Jordan, not a single academic institution, not even one, seven now under Israel. Hospitals, clinics, jobs. And therefore, I know that people speak about occupation, which reflects a sentiment I can prove to you by international law, that what happened was not occupation, but who cares about the facts anymore? If you hear some frustration in my voice, I think that we've earned that frustration. So next time people criticize Israel, you are friends of Israel, all of you are positive, and they speak about Israel's brutality, you tell them that the Palestinians exist today thanks to Israel, we gave them recognition, we gave them a chance to dream, to be a nation once again. No, we don't like it, but it would not be on the world's agenda if it wasn't for Israel's victory in 1967. We freed them from the oppression of the King of Jordan. We gave them the right to dream once again, and that dream goes into Lebanon, into Syria, which hated the idea of a Palestinian state, because the Palestinian state will create a lot of unrest in their territories. So forget about politics, and forget about facades, and forget about all that hypocrisy that you hear from Arab leaders in the area, Palestinian leaders included. 
Do we like the new situation? No, we don't. But now when we speak about Trump's plan and speaks about a two-state solution and everybody is pointing at Israel to give up more and to go through with the Palestinians though we did so many times before. But everybody needs to keep in mind there would not be a Palestinian nation if it wasn't for the state of Israel. It's an irony, I agree, but facts do matter. What well, is this for today? Be safe in your towns and in your countries, and may the God of Israel richly bless you all.